So after looking at zero and negative exponent rules, in 7.2 we're going to look at how to multiply powers using the same base. And we can use those properties of exponents to multiply powers of the same base, so we're going to work on that first question in class. But we can write a product of powers of the same base, such as 3 to the 4th times 3 squared, if I just use one exponent. So the rule behind that, if I look at 3 to the 4th times 3 squared, remember that's 3 to the 4th is broken out into four threes being multiplied times each other. 3 squared is 3 multiplied by 3, so if I combine all of those together, I have 6 threes all being multiplied, so I can write that as 3 to the 6. So we notice that the sum of the exponents in that expression, 3 to the 4th, 3 squared, if I take the two exponents, 4 and 2, and add them together, that equals the exponent of 3 to the 6. So 4 plus 2 gave us 6 for that power. And in general, I can use that rule, so that same rule that we just used, if I'm multiplying two powers and I have the same base, so base of a, base of a, whatever exponents I have, I just multiply those, or sorry, I just add those together, and that'll be my result. So in the last question, if I have a 4 and a 2, added those together to get 3 to the 6. So see if we can use that in these next few questions. 8 to the 3rd times 8 to the 6, we just have to add 3 plus 6, our two uh, powers, and I get 8 to the 9th because that is 3 and 6 put together. Same thing with 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to the negative third, 0 0.5 to the negative eighth. As long as I'm still adding those two exponents, negative 3 plus negative 8, I should get negative 11 as my power. So again, that base is still the same. I still have 0 0.5. Now I just add those two powers together. I get negative 11. Last one, if I use the base of 9, 9 to the negative second, 9 squared, and 9 to the sixth. Again, all I have to do when I'm multiplying the same base is add those powers. Negative 2 plus 2 plus 6 ends up being 6. So you can also see that negative 2 cancels the positive 2, just like we would if we were adding those two numbers together. When variable factors have more than one base, we have to be careful to combine only those powers that have the same base. So this is where you want to think in like terms. And if we're using that to find the simplified form of each expression, 5 and 3, they don't have a base of x, so we don't care about the variables there. I'm just going to multiply the 5 and 3 together as constants. But if I have x as a base for the, those next three parts, I'm going to take x to the 4th, x to the ninth, and x, and combine those all together. Remember when I'm multiplying to the same base, I add the exponents. So 4 plus 9, and the implied power here is x to the 1st, so that would be plus 1. 4 plus 9 plus 1, that's going to make 14 powers of x total. So multiply the constants, I get 15. Add the powers together, 4 plus 9 plus 1, I get 14. Same thing here on part B, except it looks like I have two different variable terms. I have a C and a D. So first of all, with the constants, I'm going to multiply. Negative 4 times 7 times 2. I can take those all together and multiply them separately. For the variables, I can only combine uh, my bases that are the same. So C to the third and C to the negative second. I can multiply those two by adding their exponents. So 3 plus negative 2. Since there's only one D term, I'm just going to leave that as D squared. I don't want to combine that with our other exponents for c. So if I multiply the constants, negative 4 times 7 times 2, I get negative 56. For my c's, I have 3 plus negative 2, so that just goes uh, c to the first, or just c by itself is fine. And remember, d had nothing else to combine with, so d squared is going to stay d squared. Same thing on that last one. If I have j and k, the j's I can combine because I have two of those bases, and I only have one uh, k variable, so I'm going to leave that by itself. Constant's going to come in front, so 12 is going to come first. For the j's, again, I have 2 plus 1 more, so I have 3 total powers of j. And if I'm writing this in simplified form, we just have to remember that I don't want to use negative exponents. So even though k is going to stay with the power of negative 2 to start with, we want to rewrite that as k to the second power on the denominator. So I, again, switch sides of my fraction if I have a negative exponent. If I have k to the negative second power, I'm going to flip that to the bottom and make that k to the second. So fully simplified, I was able to add the powers of j together, keep that 12, and also move k to the bottom of my fraction since that was a negative exponent. So just in general, if I'm asked to simplify this expression with all three bases that are the same, if I have different exponents, a and b and c, as long as I'm multiplying all with the same base, I can just add the exponents that use that same base. So that would just be adding a plus b plus c, and we can leave our answer as x to the a plus b plus c power, because we're not sure what those numbers actually are. We can use the property for multiplying powers of the same base if I want to multiply two numbers that we write in scientific notation. 
And also just as a reminder about scientific notation, you guys might have seen that before, but we can use powers of 10 to make uh, writing very large and very small numbers more convenient. In scientific notation, we can write any number as a times b, or sorry, a times 10 to the bth power, where uh, the absolute value of a is in between 1 and 10. So basically what that means is a is going to be a single digit number, and your power is going to decide basically how many places you're moving over. So for example, if I start with 250,000, in scientific notation, remember a has got to be in between 1 and 10, so I'm going to write 2.5. I'm only going to look for uh, one unit in front of the decimal point. And in order to determine your power, something that I do is decide how far we're moving our decimal point over. So if I write 250,000, usually I'd have my decimal point following this last zero. But if I move that over one, two, three, four, five spaces to the left to get 2.5, that means we're also using 10 to the fifth power as scientific notation. So for however many decimal places I moved over, that's how many powers I have. And again, we just got to make sure that A is in between 1 and 10. So 2.5 works for that. You can use that on this practice question. So at uh, 20 centimeters, or sorry, uh, yeah, Celsius, uh, one cubic meter of water has a mass of about 9.98 times 10 to the fifth grams. Each gram of water contains about 3.34 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of water. And we want to figure out how many molecules of water are in a swimming pool that holds 200 cubic meters of water. And we're going to write that in scientific notation. So first of all, this is a little bit harder than most of the questions we'll probably see on our tests. Um, they'll be a little bit more straightforward just multiplying two at once. But if I'm breaking that problem down into our variables, uh, again, first we were told that for every one cubic meter of water, we had a certain amount of grams of, yeah, a certain amount of grams of water. So 9.98 times 10 to the fifth was however many grams I had per cubic meter. Then we're also told that for every gram, it holds a certain amount of molecules. So if I express that as molecules over gram, first of all, you can tell that grams are going to cancel if I multiply those two together. And if I also want to use a swimming pool that's 200 meters big, uh, cubic meters, I can multiply it times 200, and that way my cubic meters will also cancel out. So the idea here is we want to take 9.98 and multiply times 3.34 and also multiply times 200. So when I multiply those three numbers, 9.98 times 3.34 times 200, we get a pretty big number. We get 6,666.64. And the idea here is we want to remember that if I'm using the same base, base of 10, base of 10, if my exponents are 5 and 22, I can multiply those just by adding the exponents. So 10 to the 5th times 10 to the 22nd, that's going to be 10 to the 27th because that's 5 plus 22. So remember, we do that separately. We do 200 times 3.34 times 9.98. That's why you got that number that comes in front. But if I want to change this to scientific notation, I got to remember that I got to use a number that's in between 1 and 10. And this number is definitely not in between 1 and 10. So if I want to change that around a bit, I'm going to have to move that decimal place over, it looks like, 1, 2, 3 spaces. That way I would have 6.67. And we can just kind of round that off to not keep that as such a long answer. So if I move three spaces over with my decimal point to get 6.67, now my number is in between 1 and 10. And if I move three spaces over, that means I'm going to have to add three powers of 10. So 10 to the 27th uh, and three more powers, that should give us 10 to the 30th. So again, you want to remember that uh, not going to be this complicated when it gets to a test, but you do want to be able to multiply your numbers together. So 9.98 times 3.34 and also be able to multiply your uh, exponents together. So 10 to the fifth times 10 to the 22nd. So going to look at one more page. I think I'll save that last page for class. But exponents can also be expressed as fractions. And fractional exponents we're going to call as rational exponents. So 3 squared is going to be 3 times 3. We've seen that before. That's 9. We can write that same expression if I go backwards using rational exponents. So I can say 9 to the 1 half power is going to be the same thing as just a 3. So 9 to the 1 half equals b indicates that b is the positive number when multiply itself equals 9. So you can kind of think about that a little bit backwards. If 9 to the 1 half is 3, that's because it took two 3s to make up uh, that power and get 9. So in general, if I write that, a to the one, uh, 1 over m, so if I use a fraction as a power, equals b, that implies that b is going to have to be multiplied a certain number of times to get a. So another way of thinking of that is b to the mth power is going to be a. A lot of this is a little bit more confusing if you're using just variables, so let's look at that in practice. If I have 16 to the 1 power, 
Another way of saying that is what number raised to the fourth power would give you 16? So if you think about it backwards, a lot of times it's easier to decide. So the number that we raise to the fourth power and get 16 would be 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, if I take four uh, twos and multiply them together, that should give me 16. Same thing on part B. If I'm asked what is 27 to the one-third power, another way of thinking of that is what number raised to the third power would give you 27, and that number would be 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So if I'm thinking of that in one-third, uh, 27 to the one-third power is going to give you 3. Same idea on part C. If we're asked uh, 64 to the one-half power, another way of thinking that is what number raised to the second power would give you 64. So since 8 squared is 64, that, no, that number is going to be 8. So we can also have expressions like 9 to the 3 halves, so 3 over 2, which means that I could take 9 to the 1 half, 9 to the 1 half, and 9 to the 1 half, multiply those together. Uh, so if I consider those individually, if I remember that 9 to the 1 half is 3, another way of writing that expression we just had is just 3 times 3 times 3. So uh, that's going to be 27. So if I add those up, 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, that would make 3 over 2, and 9 to the 3 halves is 27. But again, I think it's a little bit easier to look at that in practice. So let's try that with 25 to the 3 halves power. So what you usually want to start with here is what we did in the last section, which is think of the bottom of the fraction first. If I just look at that bottom of the fraction, um, if I ignore the 3 for now, 25 to the 1 half power, we want to simplify that first. So 25 to the 1 half power would be 5, because again, if I take 5 squared, that's going to be 25. So if I take 5, since the top of that fraction is 3, I'm going to take 5 together 3 times, and 5 to the third power is 125. So again, think of the bottom of the fraction first. What's 25 to the 1 half power? Using the same steps from before, we can find that that uh, power was 5. And if I have 3 powers of those, so 5 to the third, that's going to be 125. Another one of those to practice, so 27 to the 2 thirds power. Think of the bottom first. So if I want to get 27 to the 1 third power, remember just like in part B up above, I just got to think what number do I have to multiply by itself three times to get 27. And that number is 3. And now that I know that I have two of those powers, 3 squared is going to give me 9. So you've got to decide the bottom of that fraction first and then just use the top of that as a power. So last question, 16 to the 3 fourths. If I break that down into fourths first, so kind of like part A from up above, uh, the number that I multiply by itself four times to get 16 is going to be 2. So if 2 is 16 to the 1 fourth power, if I want 3 of those powers, I just have to think of 2 to the 3rd, and 2 to the 3rd is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, so that's going to be 8. We're going to look at this bottom section in class as well as that last page, so make sure you have this copied down and be ready to ask questions tomorrow.